Throughout this entire series, we've highlighted how characters can be expressed with their fatalities. Sometimes there's just a great opportunity in nature for a great final blow. These are what we call stage finishers. Introduced all the way back in Mortal Kombat 1, these finishers are unique to specific stages and have been a feature in almost every game in the series. Today, we're going to be ranking all 27 stage finishers from the worst to the best. Fight! Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. My name is Nick, and welcome to, or welcome back to the channel. If you're new, consider clicking the subscribe button to join the WAC Pack today, and to stay tuned for some more Mortal content. Today, we'll be looking at the stage finishers. These debuted in Mortal Kombat 1 and have been a feature in almost all the Mortal Kombat titles. After reading numerous requests, I'm finally doing it. Note that I'm only doing the stage finishers, so the traps from Deception and Armageddon won't count here. Those will get its own list down the line, so I can promise you that. Also, consider this my Earth Day special. Instead of combatants taking center stage, we'll let nature do the talking instead. Each of these will be ranked based on their creativity, pacing, and the impact on the series. To be frank, I don't think any of these stage finishers are bad. If there is one that I rank low, I just think that it lacks impact or it has some pacing issues, but I still find it enjoyable to watch. With that, let me treat you like a tour guide and let's get into all of the 27 stage finishers across all the Mortal Kombat games. Number 27. Picking the worst stage finisher was extremely challenging for me, as these range from okay to great to iconic. After lots of time debating, we're starting off this list by visiting Mortal Kombat X for our 27th spot. Shooting our way into number 27 is from Refugee Camp. Honestly, this one lacks the most impact and comes off as the most awkward stage finisher. You have a stage taking place at a special forces camp, and instead of having the tech take you down, being suspended in the air by bullets is what they resort with. Kinda weird, nothing too special happens, and it's pretty underwhelming. Number 26. Up next on our tour is Goro's Lair from Mortal Kombat 4. With this game recreating so many finishers from the classic trilogy, it made sense for the team to remake a stage finisher classic. However, they managed to remove some key elements about what made the original version so great. Scorpion wins. Fatality. At number 26, we have the Goro's Lair of Ceiling Spikes, a remake of the MK2 Combat Tomb stage finisher. In comparison to the classic, I feel the presentation is weaker. Changing the angle to reveal the spikes, then adding two zooms after the finisher feels a bit awkward in its presentation. Unlike the spikes on the ceiling, I found this one to be pretty dull. Number 25. Looking into Mortal Kombat's third entry with the third iteration of the pit stage. With the first two being super iconic with its presentation and impact, I'm pretty underwhelmed with this version. <laughs> Falling in at 25 is the MK3 version of The Pit. With this being the third rendition of The Pit finisher, you'd expect it to be the strongest. Unfortunately, that's not the case. My biggest gripes stem from the fall to the spinning cabal spikes and its pacing. It feels three seconds too long, evident by the opponent's scream dying down before they, well, die. Also, I would have preferred actual spikes over some sonic spins. It's pretty meh overall. Number 24. Speaking of mentioning pacing issues and lingering a bit too long, we're traveling to our next destination inside of Mortal Kombat 3. With the pit containing spike wheels instead of traditional spikes, we were hoping for some impaling stage finisher. MK3 brought us this finisher, but with some issues. <laughs> Scorpion 
Falling into number 24 is the Bell Tower Finisher. Though it is nice to see a pit style finisher, its presentation is what kinda killed it for me. Falling through numerous floors to reach the bottom is really silly and it lingers too long, which is kinda the tone for MK3 finishers as a whole, relying more on humor rather than just dark shock value. If it wasn't for the pacing issues and being that long, I think it would have placed it a bit higher. This one just didn't ring any bells for me. Number 23 headed into the updated version of Mortal Kombat 3 with the Ultimate version. This version of the game brought one additional stage finisher for us with this new stage. However, it could be a bit better in my eyes. Talk about Toasty! Taking the 23rd spot is Scorpion's Lair. Uppercutting the opponent to send them into the pool of lava is interesting, pretty similar to the MK2 Deadpool stage finisher, but less impactful. If we managed to see a burning body or smoke emanating from the lava, I would have appreciated this one a bit more. Overall, this finisher isn't as hot as the other stage finishers, as we'll see. Number 22. We've reached our final destination for Mortal Kombat 3 Vanilla with the Subway. With the first two finishers lingering a bit too long, this one could have used more elements to make it more impactful. <laughs> Speeding our way into number 22 is the Subway Stage Finisher. The first of many MK3 and UMK3 finishers to uppercut the opponent into another plane on the stage. However, I found this one to be a bit interesting, but could be easily improved. I would have loved to have seen the addition of the opponent screaming with the train speeding faster than a coasting speed, along with an explosive splash of blood for good measure. Overall, not bad, but it could be improved with some simple additions. Number 21. Revisiting Mortal Kombat X for our second stage finisher. With the first one being just flat out ridiculous with some missed opportunities to take advantage of, this second one improves over the first. At number 21, we've got the Cove Stage Finisher. Although I love the idea of Squidward's tentacles pulling you down to finish you off, I think it could have been better in its presentation. I would have preferred having the opponent thrown in the water first and then being pulled down, similar to the cold open for Jaws, which I think it would have made it scarier and cooler, in my opinion. Overall, this is another okay finisher. Number 20. I can't believe we're already visiting the latest title for our next destination, but here we are. With the Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath expansion, we were graced with four new stages and three new stage finishers, one being an original stage finisher and the other being included to existing stages. The first of the three was pretty underwhelming. Like a spiked wrecking ball, we're swinging into number 20. The Shaolin Trap Dungeon had some good potential, but it falls apart in some of its presentation. Having the opponent swung against the ceiling by the wrecking ball, like Homer Simpson in the Simpsons movie, is a pretty good start. However, I think this one falls apart once the person falls onto the spikes. It lingers a bit too long until the announcer says fatality. Instead of the spikes, what if the chain broke off the ball and it fell onto the opponent and became a freeze frame finisher? That would have been awesome, but that's just me. This finisher is a swing and a miss for me. Number 19. For once, we're finally looking at the console exclusive stage, the Chamber of Flame for the PS3 version of MK2011. This stage was unique as it's the only guest stage finisher in the entire series with three different enders. For the first of three, we're looking at the one that provides some sick burns. At 19, we've got the Incinerator finisher from the Chamber of Flame. Of the three versions of this stage finisher, I found this one to be the weakest. Although the fall in the slow-mo shot of the burning body is nice, it is a pretty simple finisher overall. From this point on, this is where the stage finishers go from being okay to good, so let's start looking at some great finishers. Number 18. Let's round out another title by looking at the second stage finisher from Mortal Kombat 4. 
With the first one recreating a classic but removing a lot of the charm, this new finisher provides some fun cinematic flair for the time. At number 18, we've got the Prison Stage Finisher. Although many are a big fan of this one, pun definitely intended, there's a few things that hold it back for me. I do think grabbing the opponent and yeeting them into the fan to shred them is awesome. The final touch of the head flying at the camera is great as well. However, the length of this finisher could have been trimmed a bit. Yeah, it's kind of nitpicky, but I still enjoy watching this one. Number 17. For once in this series, we're looking at Mortal Kombat Armageddon for some finishers. Well, now I can hear some of you saying, wait, didn't you say Armageddon traps wouldn't be included? And to that I say, you're right. However, two finishers from Armageddon require you to uppercut them after the finish him state has been triggered, hence number 17. Now that rings a bell. Number 17 is a remake of the Bell Tower stage finisher, originally from Mortal Kombat 3. Having the opponent smash through one floor makes this easier and getting to the point much faster. The opponent slowly sliding down the four-bladed spike to remove all the limbs is also unique. The nice addition is the rat that takes the leg as a snack. A good way to update a classic. Number 16. Now let's check out the title with the most amount of stage finishers with Mortal Kombat 2011. A grand total of 6 stage finishers, 9 if you include the Chamber of Flame. Of the MK2011 stage finishers, this one was a great original stage finisher added to an iconic stage from Mortal Kombat 3. Weren't you told not to play in the streets as a kid? If so, then they wouldn't have been placed at number 16. This one, pretty simple and unique, is just a good finisher. Having a crazy taxi fly in and hit the opponent while including the newly added x-ray feature is a great way to decapitate the opponent. The nice attention to detail is the opponent's twitching. A good way to include a stage finisher to a classic. Number 15. Let's jump into Mortal Kombat 2 by visiting one of the series' most iconic stages, the Deadpool. Oh, nope, not that one, but this one instead. Burning our way into number 15 is the original Deadpool finisher. This one is pretty simple and to the point. An uppercut followed by a melting skeleton is classic. For many, this was players' first Mortal Kombat 2 stage finisher they may have experienced, and it leaves a good impact. Like the pH scale, this one isn't basic. Number 14. Time to cap off the second Armageddon stage finisher by looking at another remake. With the first prison stage finisher focusing on cinematic angles, this one just cuts to the chase. Propelling our 14th spot is the Prison 3D Remake. There are some improvements on this one that places it above the original. Firstly, cutting right to the chase is nice, although it admittedly does move a bit too fast. I also appreciate the painting of the walls and retaining the head flying at the camera. This is a great way to modernize a classic, and it's one that many would be a big fan of. Number 13. Looking into the second console exclusive stage finisher from the Chamber of Flame. With the first one being pretty open, Okay, treating the opponent like leaving bread in a toaster for too long, this one goes for a different but stylistic approach. Number 13 goes to the Blade Variation Stage Finisher, dropping the opponent into numerous blades as each catch the opponent multiple times. The cool cinematic flair of this one is where the opponent seems to freeze with the blood slowly starting to spray from where the blades hit, then capping it off by having the body fall apart. Any way you slice it, this is a great way to cut in for another great stage finisher. Number 12. Let's wrap up the last Mortal Kombat X Stage Finisher, where the first two finishers from this game were original recreations that were admittedly okay in its presentation, the final one was the best of the three by remaking a classic of one of the more famous stage finishers.
Headed into the 12th spot is the Pit remake from Mortal Kombat X. In the Definitive Edition, titled MKXL, the team added one more stage, the Pit, along with the classic finisher to go with it. Of the variations of this finisher, this one is one of the better takes. Uppercutting the opponent off the bridge with the addition of hitting a spike on the way down is a great touch. Where I think the other pit finishers are better than the MKX version is the impact of landing on the spikes. It feels weaker than the other takes. Besides that, like the opponent falling after hitting a spike, this one is a great spin on an old classic. Number 11. Time to look at the second stage finisher from Mortal Kombat 2. With the first one causing the opponent to melt after taking a dip in the pool, this next one was both unexpected and impactful. Guess the opponent can see if it says gullible up there. At number 11, we've got the combat tomb ceiling of spikes. Players would begin to notice some spikes if they jumped high enough at this stage, so it's cool to see this stage implement that as an element of surprise for its finisher. This finisher was so cool, well sorry for the pun, that Sub-Zero would recreate this as a brutality in Mortal Kombat 11. Number 10. Time to close out the trio of Chamber of Flame finishers from God of War. Where I thought the incinerator was okay and the blades were cool, Crusher was my favorite. Taking the 10th spot is the Crusher variation. This one had more fun pacing for me, starting with crushing the legs, then to the body and then capping it off by going for the head, going for a fun little juggle finisher. Of the three variants, I found this one to be a smash hit. Number 9. Hold on there, we're not done looking at Mortal Kombat's reboot. We'll be looking at more original stage finishers based off one of the series' most iconic stages. Headed into number 9 is the Living Forest stage finisher. With all of the creepy faces from a nightmare form of the Wizard of Oz, I always wondered what it would look like if someone were to be eaten by one of those trees, and this one finally answered that for me. Having the legs flail in pain to end it with a nice slow motion shot after the legs break off is a nice cinematic touch. Like the opponent to a tree, this one is a nice treat. Number 8. After all of this time, let's visit the absolute classic that started it all, Mortal Kombat 1. As I've praised this game with creating some legacy finishers being remade in numerous titles, this also innovated stage finishers. Taking the 8th spot is the first adaptation of The Pit. This one, to this day, is still a classic. A simple uppercut with the opponent screaming until being impaled is great. Also, the developers being placed all over the bottom of the stage is still a nice treat to look at. This is the one stage finisher with loads of impact and helped make stage finishers become more of a mainstay in almost all future titles. Number 7. Get ready for a string of Mortal Kombat 2011 stage finishers coming your way. In this game, many of the stage finishers were improvements over the classic. Scorpion's Lair, or Hell, was heavily improved from Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Stomping into the seventh spot is the stage finisher from Hell, where the original stage finisher and the traps would just have the opponent melt in the lava, it's nice to see the player actually get more involved in this one. Slamming the opponent's head into the lava, like getting a head slammed into a birthday cake, is a great way to innovate this one. Following it up by stomping them in to finish them off is another great addition. This stage finisher is just hot as hell. Number 6. Looking at our third to last stage finisher from the reboot. Along with the likes of Hell's stage finisher, this is another legacy stage finisher with loads of improvements to make a lasting impact. <laughs> Splashing into number 6 with the Deadpool reboot. Although I can appreciate how simple the classic version of this finisher is, I really love the updated version. Uppercut it into the water and resurfacing while still alive adds some creepy body horror to this finisher. It's pretty dark to see the opponent struggle to swim back to the bridge and then realizing it's too late as they melt away, revealing some really good looking gore. This one, like the body, isn't a sinker. 
Number 5. Entering the terminal for our top 5 stage finishers by looking at the reboot once more. With the first subway stage finisher being pretty mediocre, this one adds loads of great details to make it memorable. Flawless victory. Fatality. Tunneling into number 5 is the Subway Remake. Instead of uppercutting the opponent into the railway, I prefer this method instead. Shoving the opponent into an oncoming train to perfectly time the throw into another oncoming train is just an awesome way to adapt this one. Better mind the gap. Number 4. Let's round out the rebooted title by looking at its final finisher. Of the remade versions of the classic pit stage finisher, I found this one to be the best. Freddy wins. Falling into place at number 4 is the rebooted Pitfall. This is a great way to update a classic from the trilogy. A simple uppercut, then cutting to the opponent falling from a superior angle shot as they fall to the spikes, then tracking to their fall. The great detail is how jangled they look once they land on the spikes with their liver on the top, along with the twitching. This is a great way to reboot a classic for a new audience. Number 3. Moving into the top 3 by visiting Mortal Kombat 11. One of the stages included in the Aftermath expansion was the Deadpool stage, which made its first debut in Mortal Kombat 2. Of all the ways the opponents have been hit into the acidic pool, this one was the most impactful to me. Hanging around at number 3 is the MK11 adaptation of the Deadpool stage finisher. Of all of the versions, I like this one the most. Punching the opponent onto a hook through the head, one that the entity would love, then slowly sinking into the pool is a horrifying way to go. It's impressive, it's one that looks extremely painful, and highlights the torment the opponent experiences. These are what help place this within the top 3 and helps make it take the bronze medal. Number 2. Our runner-up comes from Mortal Kombat 2, the title fans would consider one of the best in the series. With this game having some of the most iconic character finishers, so too does it have one of the more iconic stage finishers. Baraka wins. Fatality. Taking the silver medal is the pit from Mortal Kombat 2 easily one of the more memorable finishers and is one that has aged well nearly 30 years later. A simple uppercut knocking the opponent off the bridge, falling to their demise, is simple but extremely effective. To this day, the cinematic shot of the opponent falling closer to the rocky floor is still great looking to this day. For the impact of this finisher has over time, being recreated in the Netherrealm trilogy helps place this at the number 2 spot. Number 1 Headed into number 1 comes from Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath's update. With the awesome tournament stage highlighting arcade cabinets in the background and loads of fan service to the stage, we were wondering how this one would play out as a stage finisher. So what did we get? A very cinematic and creative finisher that'll leave fans grinning ear to ear. Rightfully taking the gold medal, we've got the stage finisher from the tournament. According to fighting game content creators such as Maximilian Dude and Super, this is their favorite stage finisher in all of Mortal Kombat 11, and I can understand why. The stage lights focusing on the two characters, to the MK2 finisher theme, to the reveal of the player lifting the cabinet, to Hulk smash the opponent. The great attention to detail comes from the CRT screen displaying the fatality text, done in the Deadly Alliance font. This finisher just screams fan service to Mortal Kombat players, and it deserves the number one spot. So there's my ranking of all 27 stage finishers across all the Mortal Kombat games. Which stage finisher is your favorite, and which one is your least favorite? Be sure to let me in the comment section down below, and I'll get back with you. My list isn't the right list, it's just mine, and I'd love to hear yours. While we're down there in the comment section, let's respect each other's opinions too. 
This was a list many of you have been requesting and I hope the wait was worth it. As of right now, this was the hardest video for me to rank entirely, so I hope you guys can agree with me on this one. Be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to contribute to Earth Day this year. Don't forget to come back in two weeks for the next character finisher ranking. The ranking isn't finished yet, so I guess I gotta chop chop to it. As always, thank you very much for tuning into this video. My name is Nick, and have a smooth day.